Hi there, this is Robin from 8-Bit Show and Tell. You might know me from Twitter as Bedford Level Experiment or from the podcast Growing Up 80s. And today I've got another episode with my C64 here. Recently my friend uh, Nico on Facebook was posting that he was reading the special issue from Run Magazine uh, from 1988. I just happen to have a copy of it here. There it is. And he was reading specifically page 93. You know, this little program, uh, Pet to ASCII. It's a little conversion program. Interesting little program to convert from PetSki, which is what the Commodore machines use, over to uh, a more typical ASCII. And our mutual friend Jim Happel, who's the creator of VR64, pointed out that line 40 and 50 were kind of strange. Specifically, if Z is greater than 192, then if Z is greater than 219. And he rightly asked, why isn't the this programmer using an AND? If Z is greater than 192 and Z is less than 219, then do something thought this is a strange formation. Now I found that whenever you see weird basic code, I guess once in a while it's because the programmer didn't know what they were doing, but most of the time with Commodore Basic, the programmer knows exactly what they're doing and what they're doing is optimizing the basic code for usually for speed. It turns out that that's exactly what's going on here. So I'm just going to do a bit of a demonstration here. I'm just going to type a line of code here. This is, if Z is greater than 192 and Z is less than 219, then Z equals Z minus 128. By the way, I'm Canadian, that's why I'm saying Z. That line of code, uh, basically that's line 40 here, doing it the so-called correct way. You know, the logical way that, like a, C, a modern programmer writing in a, well, in any language really nowadays, would put an AND. So that's what I've done here on the Commodore. I'm going to build a little program around it so that we can do benchmarking. I'm going to add here 100 TI string equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now if you don't know what TI string is, it's one of the reserved variables in Commodore Basic. And if you print it, you get a string that represents the two digits for hours, two for minutes and two for seconds. So this is five minutes and 59 seconds since I turned the computer on today. And there's another variable called TI and this prints a number of jiffies since the computer was turned on. And jiffies are 60ths of a second. 60 times a second the Commodore 64 has an interrupt that runs that does things like scans the keyboard and flashes the cursor and so on. Now this routine is not completely reliable. Lots of programs disable it. Even when you're accessing the disk drive, it gets disabled for a while. So this time is hardly accurate, but it's fine to use for benchmarking. So that's what we're going to use it for today. It's a built-in way of timing things and using uh, and programmatically timing things. Strangely, you can't set TI directly. If you try to, you get a syntax error. So the only way of setting it is the way I've done it here in line 100, TI string, and for whatever reason, that's the only way Commodore allows you to set it. So we're resetting it to zero uh, in string form. Okay, now look at our program so far. I'm going to add a few more lines in here. Line 110, we, when we do this benchmark, we want to run the same code 1,000 times. It doesn't have to be 1,000 times, but to get a good idea of your benchmark, you should run it a fair number of times. So I'm going to do 1,000. I'm also, I'll explain this line later. 140, next. 150, I'm going to print TI, that's the number of jiffies. 
And it's better to print ti in this case than ti string because ti shows the 60ths of a second as well. And then we're going to return. Okay, and just for clarity, here's the whole program so far. We're going to reset ti, the time index. We're going to loop from 1 to 1,000. And we're going to set z equal to a. We're going to do the actual logic. Line with 30 is where the actual line that we want to test, that we want to benchmark is. Next. And then we're going to print out the result here. Add the spaces just for a little bit more clarity and reading. And now with this little benchmark routine, I'm just going to add a few more lines at the beginning. A equals zero. And then we're going to go sub 100, which is our benchmark routine. A equals 300. Go sub 100. And finally, A equals 200. Go sub 100. And then we're going to end our benchmark program. Okay, so this is our final test program. First time we're going to set A equal to zero, and then go sub 100, which starts to run our benchmarking routine. Each time through the loop, we're going to set Z to whatever A is. This is going to cause Z to be reset every time through the loop so we get consistent results. We can just do the logic right here. If Z, if Z, which is zero, right now, because we set it up here, a equals zero, and a is z. If z is greater than 192, well, that is false. So we know that z will never be decremented. Then the next time through the loop, a is 300, and that's going to be true for this condition, but false on this one. Of course, 300 is not less than 219, so again, the then clause is not going to be run. And finally, a is 200, and that will be true for z is greater than 192, and it's also going to be true for less than 219, so finally it will be executed. Now, this is why we're resetting z each time from the variable a that's passed in, because otherwise z would just keep decreasing, and this would no longer be true. We want this line to be the same every time we run it. Okay, so I think I've explained that more than enough. We're going to run the program. One more thing to note whenever you're using this kind of technique for benchmarking is that scrolling the screen takes a lot of jiffies, so or cycles or whatever you want to call them. So when you run your program, you have to make sure that you've left room on the screen to print out all your results without triggering a scroll, because that's really going to throw off the timing. So here we go, we'll run it. This will take several seconds to run. I may fast forward it here. Okay. So 828 jiffies. Eight hundred and thirty jiffies. and 11.86. So I'm going to write down those results. And just while we're here, while we've got this all set up, I'm going to crunch this line. Crunchy means just removing any kind of spaces, anything unnecessary. And this actually saves a bit of RAM and some CPU time when you crunch it like this. So I'm going to run this again now that that line's being crunched. That's not the main point of this video, but I just thought I'd point this out while we're here. So watch that 828. After the run, it'll be updated with the new value, 821. So we saved seven jiffies. Again, I may speed this up. 830 became 824. We saved six jiffies by crunching. And the 1186 will probably drop to 1180. Oh, 1181. So we only saved five jiffies that time. But basically, you can see that it isn't a huge increase, but you know every bit counts. So crunching lines. That's why I struggle when I'm writing these, uh, making these videos, to put some spaces in to make it more readable. My habit is to crunch it.
Now what we're going to do is modify this line so that it matches Again, the original program, if z is greater than 192, then if, okay, we're going to modify. So we're going to take out the and, okay, and here we go. We're going to run it. Again, we've modified line 130, which is the line we're benchmarking. Now go ahead and run. And we'll see if we get quicker values. 463, the old value was 828. Seven hundred and fifty nine, the old value was eight hundred and thirty. And one thousand sixty three, and the old value was eleven eighty six. So you see in all three cases, we've saved a significant number of jiffies, especially in this case where none of the conditions are true. That is when, so when A is zero, this is false and basic immediately falls through to the next line. I believe that's what's happening here. But if you put the and condition, basic appears to test both conditions that is, the Z is greater than 192, and if the Z is less than 219, if you use an AND. So the bottom line is, this strange formation of if, then if, is a very big optimization. Oh yeah, and just for completeness, we'll go through and we'll fully crunch this line. I guess I had it partially crunched there. And again, we'll run it just to see if that saves any more. We had 463, and that becomes 458. 759 becomes 754. And 1063 becomes 1059. So again, we're just saving four, five, six jiffies, but okay, it's a little faster. Okay, that was a short video showing you one particular basic optimization and also a more general way of benchmarking anything. If you're curious about uh, when you have different choices when writing a basic program and you're wondering which one is the quickest, this is a simple tool uh, built into the computer that lets you profile a line and get an idea of the execution time and so you can squeeze a little bit more performance out of your old computer. If you enjoyed this video, I have dozens uh, more ideas that I'll be working on. Please subscribe and uh, like this video. I thank you for your support on my first video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.